Mark chapter 8, verse 34. <laughs> This isn't the message that I was planning on preaching this morning, but I feel led by the Lord to share this. This is something that has been on my heart heavily for some time, and I wrote an article on the church's Facebook page and perhaps you read some of it so you'll already be a little bit ahead of where I'm going with this but the cost of a soul and I read that scripture a little bit ago in Proverbs where it says he that winneth souls is wise there is nothing that you own that is in your possession that is more costly than your soul that you have right now. The Bible would tell us that you are made up of three things. You're made up of a body, of a spirit, and of a soul. But that those three things are what make you up. When we depart this life, when you die, when I die, the body falls and decays. And the spirit and the soul go to be either with Jesus Christ instantly in his presence, if Jesus has been made your Savior, or else instantly goes into outer darkness to be tormented forever if we have rejected Jesus Christ. It's one or the other. I know that when we speak of hell, you can see it on people's faces whether they have not heard the word used without being used in a profane word. And they kind of shriek with the thought, oh my goodness, he just said hell. I know when I speak of hell in the presence of children, they almost think that you're saying a profanity. Because that's the only time they ever hear the word hell. And this ought not to be the case. There's a reason why Satan uses the word hell as a profane word. So that we become so grossly used to hearing it, that we forget the seriousness of it. It is where the soul will spend eternity if it rejects Jesus Christ. When we speak of hell, we can hear those sounds and we can say that you don't want to go to hell. And we think, well, why are you talking so bold in this? But I would have to raise my Bible and say, have we not read the Word? Do we not know what the Bible says? It tells us plainly and clearly if we will read the Bible. The cost of a soul. He that wins souls is wise. As we are daily in an account, and perhaps you don't see things this way, but this is how I see them, and my desire is that you would see them the way I see them. In your daily walk, that neighbor of yours, that co-worker of yours, they are a living soul that will never, ever, 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 ever die. I am a living soul. And the Bible says in Mark 8, verse 34, it says that when he had called the people unto him with his disciples, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow him. That's the whole sermon there, and perhaps you've heard it. So I'm not going to spend the time on that. For whosoever will save his soul shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? We go to funerals, and it doesn't matter how the man or the woman lived, the preacher gets up and they say, he's in a better place now. It doesn't matter how that individual lived their life, but people stand up and they say they're at peace now. We say things over the departed without really even coming to the realization of the cost of a soul. Your house, your mortgage, your home, your, 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 your car, your boat, your property, all of these things, you might say these are the most expensive things that I own. 
but it's not true. Those are nothing. How much your soul is worth. And it required the, the Son of God to leave heaven to give His life as the ransom to purchase it. The cost of a soul. He says, what shall a man give in exchange for a soul? There's nothing in this life that you possibly could ever gain that could pay for it. That could exchange for it. Your soul is worth so much more that you can't even purchase it. Or what shall a man give in exchange for a soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. I'm confident that I cannot express in words what I feel in my heart. But we do not realize the importance of a soul. It doesn't hit us like it needs to. We don't feel the weight of it in our spirit like it should. And I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to get across to you the feeling that you must have for the soul. Not only for your own, but for someone else's. There's nothing that we have in this life that we can touch, that can touch it. The worth of it. There's nothing that we can give in exchange for it. When we think of the Bible, and I know that we think, well, I'm, too, I'm so busy to go to church. I'll go to church if I can find time. I'll read my Bible, but I'm so busy with my daily life. I have overtime that I've been working. I work 70 hours a week, and we have all of these things that we build up, but my God, can we hear what we're saying? What can we give in exchange for the soul? That money, that overtime we work so hard for, and it slips through our fingers like it was sand. It's only a matter of time before we see that all of the efforts of the week is spent on bills and on things that are gone. We buy groceries and our cupboards are empty the next week. So we go back to the old work, the grinding stone, working hard, and we neglect the things that are eternal. And we think of, well, I don't have time to read my Bible. This is eternal. It feeds the soul that will never, ever, ever die. We don't neglect to feed our body. We don't neglect to water it. We feel the, 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 the rumble of our stomach to know that I'm in need of hunger. But yet we're so distant from our soul that we don't hear our soul crying out for help. We don't see the hurting soul next to us that is looking for an answer and they can't find it because there's nothing that we have to exchange for the purchase of our soul. And I'm afraid even now when these words come into our ears, it doesn't land and take root in our spirit like it should. Jesus says, What shall it profit if a man would gain the entirety of the world? Which without a doubt it's impossible to do. We see kings that have spilt blood over and over again all for the gain of soil, for dirt, for power, for money. And yet the Roman emperor is, is no longer. Egypt is no longer what it was. Babylon is no longer what it was. Greece is no longer who they were. Kings rise up in power and they've tried all that they can to quench and to take and yet time has spent and it's no more. So what did it profit them? It profited them nothing because there's, if you gain the entirety of the world it still could not purchase the soul. He says whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me. We hear the words of Jesus and many times we might not tell that person next to us about Jesus. We don't speak to him the words of life. And he that wins souls is wise. We think, well, if they, what will they think of me? What will they talk about me? I don't want them to think I'm a, I, I, I'm a, I'm a fanatic. But listen, church, 
We're talking eternal souls. There are souls right now in hell that wish that they could hear the gospel for one more last chance, one more last time. They wish that when they heard their mother speak those words over them that said you've got to bow the knee and repent, that they would have listened to them that final time. There are souls in hell right now that will never get another chance because they believed the lie that the soul and the eternity wasn't real. They were deceived. And I am so cautious because I don't want to be deceived. And the only thing that keeps me from being deceived is the words of eternal life. But yet we neglect them. We don't guard our soul. We don't guard what goes into our spirit. We watch things on television that lure us away from the time that we could be with Christ. We don't find time for the Bible. We don't find time for church. Why? I am confident that in glory, it won't matter the overtime that I needed to spend and the neglect of church that I had. I'm confident that when I'm in glory, I won't think to myself, man, I wish I would have spent a little bit more time at home rather than at church. I'm confident that I won't ever say those words. But there are many who will say, why did I not go? Why did I spend that time in front of the television? Why did I spend that extra time at work when I could have been in the presence of God and with my brothers and sisters? But we don't give time to God. We don't take the cost of the soul. It's second fiddle to us. Because we don't realize the cost of it. There's people who hear me preach of the cross and I speak of the sacrifice of Jesus and the weight of it doesn't bear in their soul. But listen, that was the cost that had to be paid. What is your soul worth? It is worth the price of the Son of God. It is, the, it is worth the price of God Himself. Who, what king would give His life for you? What king would give his life for a lowly, filthy sinner as I? None. Even these words that I say, they, they snarl up in us because we think to ourselves, I'm not as bad as you think I am. Shame on us, for we don't really see what we look like in the mirror. Our filth is, is, and sin was so wretched, it required the Son of God to leave His home, to leave His throne. And to come to this world, to this life. There is a psalm, it's Psalm 22. It's called the Psalm of the Cross. If you read it word for word, you will read David prophesy what would happen with the cross before it even ever happened. Word for word, David foretold that his son, a son of David, would come. And these lowly dogs would pierce his hands and his feet. They would say, if you be the Son of God, come down, rescue yourself. Of with which they said all of those words to him. The Bible says in Philippians that Jesus, thinking it not thievery to take on the form of God, but he became obedient to the cross even to death. He surrendered, trusting even his life into the hands of God. How and what is your cost? What is the cost of a soul? It is that Jesus Christ had to come. And I'm not going to go through the, li the list of all what he suffered, for if you've not heard it by now, and if it's not been deep within your soul now, I don't know what it might take. But the cost of a soul, what will it cost us? To give mind to it. To pay attention to the neighbor next to us. That their soul is eternal. Your son, your daughter, will suffer all of eternity in hell and torment. Unless they give their heart to Jesus. Your neighbor will suffer all of eternity in torment in the lake of fire. Unless they give their heart to Jesus. Does that not shake us? To think of such a thing. But yet we give no time to eternal things. There's so many other things that interrupt us, that take our time. 
I was reading a preacher who preached a sermon. And to be fr quite frank with you, I wish he could just preach this message to you because perhaps he would be able to preach it far better than I. But 200 years ago or more, he stood a behind a pulpit in England and he preached a message about the cost of a soul. And after he had preached it, people had ears to hear, they had a heart to believe, and they come up by the throngs to the, to the front, and they repented of their sin, and they gave their heart to Jesus Christ. And a great revival swept the country of England. Bars began to close because their owners got saved. There was no longer bartenders to mix drinks because now they got born again. There was no longer places along the, the, the alleyways to find women who were of the night because those women got born again and they got saved. And they no longer was promiscuous. There was no place to find places to go because God had swept and people had a revelation of the cost of their soul and that which it cost to purchase it. And they would not miss a Sunday worship, Sunday worship service because they wanted to be in the presence of God with other believers. They wasn't about to be accounted at home when they could be in a place of worship. This is where I want to be. Not because it heaps righteousness to me, but because my soul hungers. For the things of God. Do we realize the cost of a soul? Do we realize the price that you are worth? We're so worried in today's world, and I'm, I'm working down to close here, but we're so worried about in this world of the self esteem issue. I want you to feel good. I don't want you to feel unworthy so I tell you there's goodness inside of you. you you are so worth so much and we lie to each other because let's get honest with this the soul is so wretched and sick and evil and fallen that it required the son of God to give his life for the purchase of it right. so I'm not good on my own I'm not worth anything Isaiah says my righteousness is as filthy rags in fact, if you really want to get down to the nitty and gritty, if you really want to talk disgust of the soul, the scripture says that we are as a menstrual cloth. Filthy, disgusting, and wretched. That needs to be tossed off and thrown away. My God, we don't talk like that in church. That's profane. That's me. That's my soul. That's what I'm worth. That God had to send forth His Son to come and save a wretch like me. That's what the cost of a soul is. But we give it no time. I got vacation time that I got to spend. Now we give every excuse we can. I got to spend family time. But let me tell you, as great as family time is, Jesus' time has got to come first. That's the cost of a soul. As much as you need to work and pay your bills, Jesus needs to come first. That's the cost of a soul. But do we put Him first in our life? Do we let Jesus truly go before us? Do we let Him lead us? Or do we spend time for ourselves? Oh, we hear it all. You need time for yourself. But let me challenge you. Find that in the Bible and read it to me. And then I'll believe it. I care very little what a psychiatrist says about us. This is where my heart is. This is eternal words of life. This is what I live by. You would not believe the Christians in church that quote things as if it's the Bible and it's not even there. They live their life according to verses that never were spoken by Jesus. They'll one day find that they believed a lie and that they're deceived. The cost of a soul, this alone, will reveal it to us. But do we spend time in it? 
Do we spend the time and the hours in the Bible that we should? I don't have the numbers, but if I did, you would be shocked as I would if I could tell you the amount of hours that average person spends watching television. At the end of an average life, it involves years of sitting behind a television screen. Or even the, the hours that we spend reading a novel that has no pull for, for the cost of a soul. I knew a pastor's wife once that said, I do not read the Bible because I don't understand it, but I read Christian romance novels. But let me tell you now, even that woman will spend eternity in hell if she gives no more care for her soul than that. I don't care if Jeanette Oak or whoever else it might be. It won't save the soul. Only Jesus can save the soul. And that's the words of eternal life. That alone is the revelation of what my soul is worth. But do we believe it? Do we see it? Because if we believe it, we're going to follow it. That's obedient faith. If I say, can I get an amen? And everybody says, amen, Pastor Lathan. But then we don't walk in it. Then in fact, we were lying. Amen? amen? I've said this before. And this is what I'm going to say in closing. This is what faith is. If I tell you at midnight tonight, a man is going to break into your house and rob you. And you say you believe me. And tonight you go home and you go to bed for tomorrow's work day and you're asleep at midnight that in fact you did not believe me. You said you did. But you didn't believe I actually had cre credit, credence to what I was saying. But if I tell you at midnight tonight someone's going to break into your home and rob you and you say I believe you and you go home and you call the police and you make preparations because you know when the clock strikes midnight, there's going to be a burglar showing up. And you want to be prepared that in fact when that robber shows up, you would have truly believed me. But how many of us hear the preacher, we read the Bible, we say we believe him and we believe the Bible, but we don't walk in it, we don't do it. We're only proving to ourselves that we are a liar and we don't believe it. If we say we believe the Bible, then let's live it. Amen? Let's dedicate our life to it. If I say I believe this and I don't walk in it, then I am a hypocrite full of lies. And you have no reason to believe me. But if you want to challenge what I say this morning, read your Bible. I challenge you to read your Bible. Prove to me that I'm wrong. And if you do so, You'll only prove that I'm right. Because what I'm saying this morning is the Bible. It is the Word of God. Do you care about your soul and where it spends eternity? Do you care about the soul of your loved one or where they spend eternity? If you say yes, then my goodness, go and do something about it. Grab them by the shirt tail if you have to and tell them you've got to repent. Turn your life around. Time is running short. And if they say, let go of me, let me go. You don't listen to them. Because you know the cost of a soul. Tell them about Jesus. If you bow your heart with me. I know there's some here right now that may not know Jesus Christ. If right now Jesus Christ would return according to Scripture... Or your heart would stop. You would find yourself in outer darkness. Have what we spoke of today, has it riddled our soul? Have we bent the knee and repented of our sin and accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior? Perhaps you're angry. Perhaps you feel an annoyance about what I've spoken this morning. 
I am sorry to hear that if that is the case. I can't do nothing about it. Ezekiel will tell us that God told him, go warn the people. If they will hear, then you save the soul and their blood's not on your hands. If you warn them and they don't listen, then they're going to go to hell, but their blood will not be on your hands because you warned them. But if you keep your mouth quiet and you don't say nothing, and they go to hell, I will require their soul at your hands because you did not tell them the warning. And I don't want no one's blood on my hands. I don't want no one to be able to say I attend Seabreeze Ministries and I didn't know. Nobody told me the way of life. I won't have no one come to Seabreeze Ministries and then stand before God and then say, I attended that church for years and the pastor never told me that. God forbid. But if we reject the words of eternal life, it will be because of our own choice. I heard the preacher preach. And the Holy Spirit spoke to my soul and said, He's talking to you. And I gave my heart to Jesus. And I thank God for those preachers who preached. <coughs> the cost of a soul. What is your soul worth?